they were uh, investigating, they were getting people, but uh, it's a kind of, you know, the race against the time. Uh, and sometimes you lose. How is the situation right now in Brussels? Uh, so the situation for me, I'm in the commission, which was, you know, very close to the metro station where the second the attack uh, occurred. Uh, it's very quiet here. Uh, I can see from reports and from my colleagues on the ground that uh, it's quite very quiet in the center. Uh, a lot of places and streets are empty, but people are gathering next to the bourse you know, the stock exchange, the former stock exchange. And there is a kind of, um, of spontaneous gathering with people, uh, you know, it, cars doesn't run, there, doesn't go there. So people are just gathering and uh, trying to, to, they are writing on the road, on the pavement, um, uh, like to pay homage to, to, to the victims and to express themselves. Uh, it's a bit of a chaos because there is no metro, no tram, no bus, a lot of traffic jams, which is quite usual in Brussels, but even worse today. Uh, the main train stations are closed. They should reopen uh, later in the afternoon, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit of a strange situation. Where were you when you got the information about the attacks? Uh, I was at home because we, at EU Observer, we start working at 7. And so we were preparing the articles from the morning, from the newsletter at 9.30. I was writing on EU corruption. Uh, and, uh, and I don't know why. I think I was checking just the news on Twitter, because I'm always on Twitter. And then I saw, you know, the first, one of the first tweets saying one explosion in, Brussels, in, in the airport. And, uh, and then so we started to, to look at it, uh, to write a, a first quick article, and then we saw that there was something in the metro, and uh, we knew it was uh, big, yeah. And what does the police say now? Are you allowed to go out? Are you allowed to leave? Um, so for me, at the commission, it's quite, uh, we know that if we go out, we won't be able to, go, to come back in. Uh, because of the security. Uh, so f to, to work, we stay, I stay inside. I have my two colleagues on the ground uh, who will be reporting later. So I don't need to, to go there right now. Um, but I, I, I see pictures on Twitter, on Facebook, and I see that people are, you know, getting closer to, well, the airport is closed and it's very difficult to, to, to go to the airport, but uh, Malbec is quite near and uh, people are starting to, to get closer to, to the area but it's still closed by the police because the, of course uh, emergency services are still there and the police also they have to, to, to check the, the area. So uh, for me I'm staying inside right now. What about your colleagues, your friends, are they safe? Yeah, fortunately I have no bad news yet. Um, you know, I have contacts in, in Brussels and uh, I sent a, a message, a text message to a person working for the commission in another building and he said he was okay but he had two colleagues at hospital. Uh, the journalists are okay, the journalists I know. Uh, I, yeah, I saw, I have a friend, a friend who is working not far from Malbec, the metro station next to it, and she was okay this morning as well. So, uh, you know, I'm French, uh, I come from Paris, and uh, it's a bit like it was in November, you know, you have people, you try to know that if people are okay. Uh, I have a lot of messages this morning from people in Paris or Brussels asking me if I was okay. So it's a kind of a relieve, relieving the same things through again and again. And how far these attacks will change Brussels? I don't know. You know, there was this lockdown in November after the, the Paris attack, so it was quite serious. Uh, since then, we've had uh, soldiers almost everywhere in the metro every day. Uh, but I think that Belgian people are quite um, non-dramatic people. So I think their kind, their way of things, things uh, lightly, their way of, you know, making not fun, but making the best of the situation will come back quickly. But I expect that from a few days, it will be a strange atmosphere. 
probably. Uh, but I, I mean, we all knew that it was going to happen. That's, that's a fact. Uh, yesterday morning, um, the interior minister here said that the arrest of uh, Salah Abdel Slam last Friday was very likely to trigger, uh, to, he said, activates uh, other cells, terrorist cells. So, you know, the authorities had said that that could happen. We knew it would happen. Uh, voilà. It's not so surprising that it's the airport, the metro station. I mean, it's a kind of usual target for the terrorists. Uh, yeah, so I guess once the shock is gone, uh, things will go back to normal. I hope so. Well, I saw that in Paris in November, December. It was, you know, a very weird atmosphere when I, came ba when I went back to Paris a few times. All the times I met people who knew someone who had been there, who had been killed. Or, well, uh, so I think we'll have this for a few weeks here. But fortunately, it's Easter holidays. Easter weekend is coming. So maybe it will be a kind of, you know, relieving people, relaxing the atmosphere well. Uh, so. Concerning all the security measures since November, how could this happen? Well, um, you, you know, I've, I've, I've been to the airport a few times since November, and uh, you, you have soldiers patrol, but there are no checks. They are, of course, they cannot open every bag and every suitcase in an airport. So if someone comes with a bag and blew himself out, I mean, what can you do? Uh, so you have to go uh, to, the, to the surveillance, to the intelligence work. Last week, they found one place where there were uh, heavy weapons, explosives, detonators. Then three days later, they arrested a few guys. So they were on their tracks. Uh, they were uh, investigating, they were getting people, but uh, it's a kind of, you know, the race against the time. Uh, and sometimes you lose. Uh, well. There was one reaction in Germany from the right-wing party saying, we told you, or oh, you have to think about Islamist terror. Um, do you think they will use it for their ideology? Well, of course. Of course. Uh, I think it was only yesterday, you know, times is... <laughs> Distorted right now, but I think it was yesterday. Uh, Marion Maréchal Le Pen, so you know Marine Le Pen's niece, she said that uh, if Front National had been in power, the November attacks in Paris would not have not taken place. So that's the kind of use they make of these kind of events. And so yes, you can expect. I, I saw a few things about AFD uh, earlier today. Well, it's. I mean. It, I would not say it's fair game for them, but it's obvious that they are going to use it. It's the, they are not taking gloves, as we say, you know, they are just using everything they can. So yeah, expect that, but we have to be quite uh, intelligent in the response and uh, quite solid in the arguments, uh, making the difference between the whole Muslim population and the part of them which exists, the part of the Muslim population that, who supports these people and these small groups of uh, radical peoples. But we have to separate these different groups and know exactly who to look at and who to uh, act upon and, uh, and, and at the same time have a kind of dialogue. Uh, that's important, I would say. When you think of the attacks in November and now in March in Brussels, how will that change Europe? Uh, after the Paris attacks, there were a few meetings here of EU leaders, EU ministers, and uh, since then we have the controls, the checks at the French border when we, you drive from Belgium to, to France. When you take the Thales train, when you arrive in Paris, you have checks, police, and when you go from Paris to Brussels, you have, you know, like in the airports, the security checks for your suitcase and bags. So maybe that will happen from Brussels to other cities now. Uh, you will have soldiers everywhere. Uh, I guess you will have more checks at airports, international trains, Schengen, external borders as well. well. You know, in these areas, even if you cannot mix the two issues, but in these areas, the, the measures taken for the, the migration crisis, the refugee crisis, and the measures taken after the, the attacks um, are quite the same. They are just uh, reinforcing controls uh, on, on the external borders and maybe internal borders. 
so I think that would be the evolution we have to to well, to get used to, and maybe a few a few sorry maybe a few laws you know again to to checks on your conversations and communication. That's what happened in France last year after Charlie Hebdo, before uh, the November attacks. Um, I think there is a, a kind of this legislation ongoing in I forgot in which country, but there was something in recent days somewhere in Europe. And yeah, well, you will see that again, of course.